Hello language learners, it's Maddie here again from English with Maddie. And today I am welcoming you back to another interview real talk video here on my YouTube channel. And I'm so excited to introduce you to today's guest. Today you are going to get the chance to meet my friend Mary. Mary and I first met when we both were studying abroad in Japan and we both had the opportunity to go back to Japan the following summer and work uh, as assistants and interns in our study abroad office. So we got to know each other really well through that experience. Mary is such a wonderful, brilliant, inspiring person, and she has a lot of great things to share with you guys. So I'm so excited for you to hear what she has to say. So without further ado, let's hear from Mary. Hello everyone, my name is Mary. I'm 27 years old and I currently work in city government. Um, I live in Texas with my boyfriend and our cat. So our first question here is, where did you grow up? Uh, I grew up and I currently live in San Antonio, Texas. It's right in the middle of Texas and it's about two and a half hours by car north of Mexico. I love living in San Antonio because it's a very historically important city and it's a very old city. And uh, the only UNESCO World Heritage Site in Texas is in San Antonio and that's the San Antonio Missions National Historical Park. Next question is, where did you go to college? What were you studying? And how did you become interested in those subjects? So I got my bachelor's degree at uh, Texas A&M University, which is in College Station. I studied international politics with a minor in Japanese there. Um, ever since I was a little kid, I've always been interested in learning about different countries and their cultures and their languages and their people. Um, so that was my main reason for wanting to study international studies. Uh, but I chose politics because as I got a little bit older and started reading the news, um, I became very interested in not only the governments of other countries, but how the U.S. interacts um, with those governments. So at that point, when I was uh, studying international politics, I thought that I wanted to become a diplomat or work for the United Nations. Uh, but while I was there, I actually did get the chance to go to Washington, D.C. and do an internship at the Peace Corps office there. And that was a really great experience because the Peace Corps is all about uh, the, the interaction and the relationships between the U.S. and countries around the world. Uh, what the Peace Corps is, is a program where volunteers from the U.S. travel abroad to different countries and engage in various community service projects um, like building schools and hospitals or teaching English to kids in those countries. Uh, so even though I didn't go to another country, I was just working in the office. Uh, I got to be part of an organization that did that kind of work and I got to meet people from all over the world while I was working there. So it was a really great experience. And a couple of years after that, uh, I went back to school to study public policy at uh, the University of Texas, which is in Austin. And my reason for doing that was because uh, after I graduated um, from A&M, uh, I found that I was still really interested in government and working in government and public policy. And so I wanted to study that more. And so I got my master's degree in public policy and I currently work in government now. So it all worked out for the best and I really enjoy my job. Next question is, when did you first start studying a second language? So I started studying a second language in high school. Uh, in high school, we're, we were required to take three years of a foreign language. And uh, I decided to take Spanish as my foreign language because a lot of people in Texas uh, speak Spanish as well as English. Um, so I thought that it would be practical for me to know a little bit of Spanish. 
uh, but after I graduated high school and I went to college, I started studying Japanese. So now my Japanese is a lot stronger than my Spanish is, unfortunately. Um, next question. What were the most challenging and most rewarding parts about learning a second language? So for me, the most challenging part of learning a second language is just getting comfortable with making mistakes. Uh, I'm very shy even when I study uh, and speak English. Um, so learning a foreign language, I always was very afraid at first when speaking in my target language because when I was speaking with other people, I really didn't want to make mistakes because I felt like I would just be so embarrassed to do that. Uh, but I found that mistakes are a part of the learning process and you have to make mistakes in order to get better at a language. And I think as soon as I realized that my fear and being afraid of speaking was really hurting my progress in learning languages, um, and I, st I started to get more brave um, and put myself out there more and make more mistakes. Um, so I think that was my challenge that I was able to get over. Uh, I would really recommend if you're studying a foreign language, please don't be afraid to make mistakes. I make mistakes all the time now when I'm speaking Spanish and Japanese, and uh, it's really not the end of the world when you make mistakes. Um, I would say the most rewarding part of studying languages, and really the reason why I wanted to start learning foreign languages in the first place, uh, is getting to interact with other people from different walks of life and different cultures and to make friends. Uh, some of the conversations and the friendships that I've made uh, through studying languages are some of my most cherished memories and my most cherished friendships. So that to me is the best part of studying is just getting to meet new people and make friends. Next question. How did you decide to study abroad? What was it like and what were your experiences? Uh, so both of my study abroads, uh, I did because they were required by my, by my program, by my school. My first study abroad uh, was to Costa Rica. I stayed in San Jose, Costa Rica for about a week uh, and I lived with a host family while I was there. That trip was part of a scholarship program that I was a part of, so I didn't get to pick the location. Everyone just went to Costa Rica together. And so I stayed with one of my classmates in a home there. And the family that I stayed with was very kind and sweet, even though I was studying Japanese at the time and the girl who I was staying with uh, was studying Chinese. So neither of us really spoke Spanish that well, uh, but the daughter of the family was studying English. So we were able to communicate with the family fairly easily. Um, and that was a really good experience. And I think that, uh, was my it was my first uh, experience traveling to another country um, and that also really made me interested in going back to Latin America which I really want to do sometime and my second study abroad of course was to Japan uh, part of the international studies program at my university required you to study abroad and that experience was really uh, to this day one of my most cherished memories I also stayed with a host family while I was there um, and my host mom that, that I stayed with during my study abroad, she is still a very cherished friend of mine and any time that I go back to visit Japan, I have to visit her. Uh, so the most recent time that I went last year to Japan, uh, I brought my boyfriend with me and she was able to meet my boyfriend for the first time and um, that was a really great experience. So. Uh, I really enjoyed my study abroad in Japan, not only because I got to immerse myself in the language by doing a homestay and interacting with people in my community, uh, but I still have friendships from that experience that are strong today, even though, gosh, that was almost seven years ago now, uh, but I, I loved my study abroad in Japan and um, I have gone back several times since then. The next question is, what were the hardest parts about living in a non-English speaking country and what were the best parts? I think one of the hardest parts of living in Japan specifically was that as I was going about my day-to-day -day activities, I always had to have my Japanese brain on 
Uh, so I had to be ready to speak Japanese at a moment's notice, whether it was talking to someone on the street or asking someone directions uh, or going to school or going to the post office, things like that. Um, so even on days when I was very tired or kind of sad or feeling sick and just really my brain was not working properly, I still had to be ready um, to speak in my, for, in my target language. Um, which if, if you're studying a foreign language, you know that uh, being able to think in your target language uh, can take a lot of effort and take a lot of energy out of you. Uh, so although I was able to speak English with my fellow classmates uh, who are studying abroad, most of the time um, I still had to speak Japanese pretty frequently. Uh, so that I think was the hardest part. Uh, also, uh, being away from my family and friends was very difficult. Uh, so I, I love my family and uh, I love my friends and I love helping them out when they when they need me and not being able to be there for my friends when they were feeling sad or going through a rough time, uh, I think was really hard for me too. Uh, and one of the best parts I think about living in a non-English speaking country uh, was that through my interactions with other people, I got to be exposed um, to different ways of thinking and living life. Um, so, for example, I walked to school every day, and that maybe was about a mile walk. And so while I was walking, uh, I got to experience nature in a way that I wouldn't normally get to back home. And through living with my host mom, uh, I got to talk to her and experience uh, what Japanese people worry about and their, um, their outlook on life and things like that. Um, so that was, that was one of the best parts. And, and also uh, getting to realize that you can have something in common uh, with someone who lives halfway across the world. Um, while I was in Japan, I got to make friends with people who listened to the same music as I liked. And uh, for example, one time I was uh, sitting in the living room with my host mom and we were watching a variety show and Hugh Jackman came on. And I mentioned that Hugh Jackman was my favorite actor and she was like, oh, he's mine too. And, and so uh, early on in my relationship with my host mom, we kind of got to bond over that shared love for our favorite actor. Um, so I would say those were my uh, favorite parts of living abroad is not only getting to see the ways uh, that people in other countries think about life, but also learning how uh, the ways that we think and the things that we like are very similar too. Next question is, when do you use other languages besides English today? So I don't use Japanese at all in my current job, uh, just because there aren't that many Japanese people where I live, but I do use a little bit of Spanish in my current job. Uh, part of my job is taking phone calls from people all around my city. And so sometimes people will call in Spanish. And although it's very challenging for me <laughs> to speak Spanish over the phone, I am able to give them a little bit of information. And uh, especially since most of the people who call me are older people, um, I really enjoy getting to help them out and give them some information while also challenging myself to speak Spanish. Uh, and that's a really big motivator for me to study Spanish more just so that I can help people who um, ask me questions. And also my job, uh, it, it will pay me more if I, if I speak Spanish. So that's another motivator for me as well. Next question is, do you have any advice for people who are trying to learn another language or who hope to live or study abroad? My biggest piece of advice would be just to trust in yourself. Uh, it's very hard when you first start studying a language and your progress is very slow for you to think that one day you're going to become functional in this language. It's very hard to believe that sometimes, but you can learn. And I think a lot of people um, underestimate their ability to be functional in their language uh, before they go to a foreign country. So for example, when I first went to Japan, I was so worried that I wouldn't be able to interact with anyone uh, because I had never had to speak it full time. But I was able to get around 
and uh, interact with people and get my point across a lot uh, more easily than I thought I would. So I would just say you're probably a lot better than you think you are because we are our own worst critics, right? So you're going to think that your language skills are a lot worse than probably someone else is going to think. And as far as living abroad, uh, I would say it's a very awesome experience. I think, especially as an American studying abroad, it really helps you get a different idea of the U.S., if that makes sense. Um, listening to news uh, about the U.S. from another country's perspective is a really humbling experience. Uh, and also another piece of advice for living abroad, I think, uh, is that living abroad comes with the same challenges as living anywhere else. So you still have to go to work, do your chores, pay your bills, and it's not just going to be a happy, fun experience all the time. You are gonna have some challenges, but that doesn't mean that it's not worth doing. And last question is, what are some of your goals or dreams for the future? So my next major goal is that my boyfriend and I wanna buy a house together. So we're looking around for houses right now. And one thing that I really wanna do when we're able to get our own house is to foster cats. Uh, so we have our own pet cat, but we want to start fostering cats from a shelter. And what that basically means is that when shelters, animal shelters, get really full of animals and they can't take anymore, what you can do is you can sign up to take some of those animals into your own home and take care of them until someone wants to adopt them. So I think it would be great to not only do something nice for these cats so that they don't have to stay in the shelter, but it will also give my cat some friends to play with. So I'm really looking forward to taking care of some cats from the shelter. And also I'm really looking forward to traveling more when it's safe to. My uh, biggest places that I wanna go uh, right now are Belize, uh, which is in Latin America. Australia. I also want to go back to Europe. I went to Ireland for the first time a couple of years ago and had a lot of fun. And I now have a friend who lives in the UK, so I'd love to go visit him and, and also visit um, other countries in Europe. And of course, I always want to go back to Japan and explore uh, more cities and prefectures that I haven't been to yet. Uh, another goal of mine is to study languages more. Uh, right now I'm focusing on Japanese as my primary language of study, but I want to obviously become more functional in Spanish so that um, I can use it uh, in my job and also in my day-to-day -day life. I'd also love to learn Vietnamese. Uh, my, my boyfriend is Vietnamese and, and his family all speak it. Uh, so I would love to be able to maybe one day travel to Vietnam and get to speak to his family members. And I also would love to learn something that's very different uh, from any language that I've studied before. And when I'm thinking of those languages, uh, it would be really awesome to learn something like Russian or German in the future. So uh, I have a lot of goals <laughs> and hopefully a very busy future ahead of me. So with that, Good luck on your language studies, everyone. I hope you guys enjoyed hearing from my friend Mary today. Um, if you have any questions or if you found anything really interesting, make sure to leave me a comment down below. I would love to chat more with what you heard or learned or had a hard time understanding from this interview video. In addition to that, speaking of studying and learning, if you click on the link down in the description box, you will find a link to the English with Maddie website where you can find the transcript, listening, practice, um, worksheet, and a study guide for this video. This will really help you if you are working on your listening comprehension and this listening practice worksheet is one of the main reasons I don't put subtitles on these interview videos. 
I want you guys to work on comprehending and understanding everything you can by yourself first and then double check with the transcript and see if there was anything you missed or misunderstood. All right, guys, thanks again for watching. Make sure to subscribe if you haven't already, and I will see you next time for more videos on English with Maddie. Happy studying!